Hey, what's good guys? It's Zach. Hope you all are doing well. So the Galaxy S8 just came out a little while ago and I thought I'd make this video sharing with you guys some tips and tricks to really boost the user experience of this phone. So maybe you just got your phone and you want to know what to do with it or maybe you're getting the phone and you just want to take some notes for when you actually do get the phone. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that I think that you should do when you get your Galaxy S8. All right, so the first thing I would do is check out the theme stores. You can see here right now, I have the material black theme going on here. It's really, really nice. It looks really good, especially on this AMOLED display. It looks really, really slick. And uh, let's go ahead and check out some of these themes here. You just long press on the home screen, go to wallpapers and themes, and you should see it. You tap on the themes down here and you can check out all of the themes that you have installed. Of course, I only have one. There's the default one right there. And then of course, you can check out all of the other ones that are available. The one that I am suggesting here is the material black theme. This looks really, really good on this phone. And uh, yeah, you can get little previews here, you know, checking out to see what it's like before you actually get it. When I got it, it was free. I'm not sure if it's going to stay that way, but it should be free. And uh, yeah, you can just apply that right there. Of course, I already have it applied and man, it looks really good on this display. So let me go ahead and go into the settings where you can really see it. Yeah, it looks really, really good. So next up, a lot of you may already know this, but for those of you that don't, out of the box, the Galaxy S8 is actually set default to 1080p resolution on the screen here. So just go into your settings, go to display, and you can actually set it to QHD, which is the highest resolution. Uh, so it is actually defaultly set to full HD right there. You can go ahead and change it to WQHD plus and hit apply and it'll apply and uh, you'll have the highest resolution that you can get on this screen. All right, so the S8 is already a pretty fast phone, but uh, this next thing will help you make your S8 feel a lot faster. So go ahead and go into your settings, go to about phone, go to software information and tap on the build number a few times until you see at the bottom developer mode will be enabled. So you can go ahead and there you go, right, right below about phone, you now have developer options. Go ahead and go in here, scroll down until you see, there we go, window animation scale, and you can change all of these to 0.5 and that'll make everything seem really nice and quick. As you can see here, animations are a bit faster. So if I go back into the settings here, for example, you can see the animations are a good amount faster now. So. That's something really cool. If I go home, you can see that it's nice and fast. All right, so the next thing is for this Bixby button here. A lot of people don't like Bixby. I actually think it's okay right now. It's still in its young stages. I'm not really gonna go into what I think about Bixby, but a lot of people don't really like it and they want to be able to remap this button as I'm running low on battery right now. I haven't charged this thing in forever, but uh, long story short, at first, we were able to remap this button with an application. Second, Samsung said, nope, can't do that. So they uh, kind of disabled the ability to do that. But now we actually, uh, you know, developers have swung back, so to speak, and uh, we are now able to actually do this. The application is called BX Actions. So go ahead and download this application. And basically you can just remap to do very simple things. Unfortunately, you can't do double tap or long press with this. You can just, you know, set it to open up something very, very simple, like an application of your choice or, you know, Google Assistant, which is pretty much what most people want to do. And now that I'm at the home screen here, I can go ahead and hit the uh, Bixby button. And there you go, Google Assistant pops right up. <laughs> of course, it's uh, getting what I'm saying. So you can actually reset it to open up an application of your choice. So if you want it to open up, oops, <laughs> if you want it to open up something like, uh, I don't know, like the clock or the calendar or the calculator, let's just do the calculator. For example, I'm at the home screen and I just want to open up the calculator real quick. Just hit the button and there you go. That's really cool. And of course you can do it. Uh, you can set it to open up the camera or the flashlight, which I think could be pretty useful as long as you don't accidentally press it. Um, there you go. It is now uh, enabled. Of course, we can just turn that off really easily. So this is a really useful application if you want to remap that Bixby button. All right. So for the next thing, we are back in the settings. We're going to go ahead and head into advanced features and you see here finger sensor gestures. So uh, what this allows you to do, it's very similar to the Google Pixel. You can actually swipe down on the fingerprint reader on the back of the phone uh, to bring down your notification shade. So of course, this is already enabled. So if I were to swipe down on the fingerprint reader, so you can see there, it brings down my notification shade. I swipe up and it pulls it back up. So there you go. It's a very useful feature, especially since the screens on these phones are a lot taller. 
it's gonna be a lot more difficult for people to reach the top of the phone to bring down the notification shade. So you can do that really easily here with your fingerprint reader, there you go. All right, so this next one is really simple. It's just taking a screenshot that has now changed because there is no more physical home button. Of course, before on Galaxy devices, you would press the power button and the home button at the same time to take a screenshot. But now it's pretty much just like every other Android device that doesn't have a home button uh, you know, built into the phone. It's not a physical home button. You just press the volume down and the uh, power button. There you go, and it takes a screenshot. So super simple. Also on previous Galaxy phones, you would double press the home button to quickly open up your camera. And uh, now of course, since there is no physical home button, you now do it just like you do on the Pixel. You double press the power button. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. Double press and the camera is now open. So that's pretty cool. Go ahead and do it one more time. There you go, it's really nice and fast. It's just on a different button now. All right, so we're back in the settings and this time we're gonna go to display and then we're gonna go ahead and go to navigation bar and this is where we can change up the navigation bar since we have these software keys now all right so the first thing that you can do is you can actually change the color background of the navigation bar so if i went ahead and tapped on this you can choose from these presets and as you can see these are some pretty nice colors but of course you can choose whatever color you want whatever color you would like to see you can make it happen here for this navigation bar uh, so there's that you can also choose the orientation of the button layout so if you want the back button on the right hand side, and this is actually what it comes like uh, by default, it comes in this uh, variation, this uh, layout right here. You can actually switch it to how I had it before uh, where the back button is now on the left. You can also change the home button sensitivity. And you can also uh, select this option right here, which allows you to unlock your phone just by hitting the uh, home button, just pressing it once like that and actually pressing it in because there is some taptic feedback that happens down there. So there you go. All right, so the next one is a quick one. Go ahead and long press on the home screen, go to home screen settings, and we can change the grid size of both the home screen and the app drawer. So you can go up to five by five and you can see what it'll look like if you uh, switch between the different grid sizes. I like five by five. Uh, same thing for the app drawer if you change it. This is what it comes like default four by six. I like five by five, so I have it set to that. Uh, yeah, you can do that. And then you can also uh, select this here, this is the app button, the uh, app drawer button. You can actually uh, bring that back if you wanted to. So if we go back home here, you have that app drawer button, which is something that we're all used to with the Galaxy devices. So you can just tap this to bring up the applications. But if we go back into the settings here and uh, disable that, it'll bring up the current way of doing it, which is swiping up or swiping down to getting to the application. So there you go. Now this next one is for those of you that really like to organize your application. So if you wanna move multiple applications at once, you can do that here, which is really, really nice. So if I wanted to move all of these applications at the same time, go ahead and long press, hit select multiple items, and I can go ahead and select all of these um, and I can create a folder, which is pretty cool. I can just remove them all at the same time. And that's really cool because in my app drawer, I do like to keep things more organized. I do have to do some more organization here, um, but if I wanted to move all of these applications and toss them in the folder, I can do that. So I don't have to do them one by one. So that is really, really welcome. All right, so for the next one, we are back in the settings. Let's go ahead and go into advanced features and we can do one-handed mode. Now this is nothing new. Uh, we've had this on Samsung devices for a long time, but uh, in case you forgot or you didn't know about this, feature you actually do have this so you can uh, choose to uh, tap the home button three times to enable this because we do know these are big screens and we may not be able to access everything especially when using the phone with one hand so if we're to hit this three times in a row it'll <laughs> decrease the actual uh, display area uh, of whatever's on our screen so we can access everything really really easy we can change the side what side it's on it can be on the right side it can be on the left side and just change it right there super easy so if there's something that you needed to access and you only have one hand free then you can do that so that's really really cool and uh, yeah it's nothing new but uh, it's nice to have so I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of the edge features but maybe not all of you are aware that we do have some features that uh, came over from the Galaxy Note things like the rectangle uh, smart select which is pretty cool we can go ahead and select a specific area to be captured as opposed to taking a full on screenshot this will just go ahead and take a screenshot of the specific area that we uh, point out here so if I just want like this area for some reason I can go ahead and do that and I can save it as a screenshot I can set it as my wallpaper and all that good stuff and I can also do it with the oval here it's pretty much just a circle and then we can also do gifs or gifs whichever one you guys go with um, you can also make your own gifs which is pretty cool 
And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's just another thing to note. And just to close things out, because we are running Android 7.0 Nougat here, we do have a blue light filter. So in case you didn't already know about this, we do have a blue light filter and you can actually uh, set it to enable itself. Uh, during a certain point of every day so that's cool and then one of my most favorite features is double tapping the recent apps button because we are running android nougat uh, double tapping this to jump back to our previously used application so that's really really cool and it works really well nice and quick so there you go that's pretty much it and my last tip would be probably to pick up a d brand skin and i could not be more serious about this because as you'd expect i mean there, there's just so many fingerprints on here and of course you know just get a microfiber cleaning cloth and you're done but the galaxy s8 the back here is very easily scratched i haven't wiped this thing on a table i haven't thrown it anywhere just regular use i've actually been babying the phone and i do have some hairline scratches back here not cool at all so i recommend you pick up a d brand skin uh, this is their uh, black dragon skin i'll leave a link for it down below in the description but uh there you go that's pretty much been it i hope you guys found this video useful if you did feel free to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but that does it for me i'll talk to you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching